Today on Bearish TV's Reef to Reef FAQ, we're answering three of the community's questions from last week's episode, where we took a look at what's really in zero TDS water. First question was a bit more of an observation made by Chipmunk of Doom 2. From my quick math, your COM100 appears to have been set to the 442 conversion factor of 0.7. I have to say, solid catch, I personally don't use the COM100 very often, and I made a less than accurate assumption that it shared the same calibration based on sodium chloride as the other HM digital meters. Turns out you can actually set the COM100 to a variety of different conductivity standards, which is a feature that most reefers don't have with their meters. That said, since reading in straight EC or electrical conductivity rather than one of these estimates is an option with this meter, I would suggest using that option. Next up, Biff24701 asked if the color changing DI resin is different from the other bulk resins other than the color changing indication. There's no difference other than the color changing resin has a pH indicating dye which changes the color as the resin's depleted and costs a couple bucks more. That said, it's by far the most popular because most reefers find it fairly useful to have a visual indicator if the resin's 50, 75, or 90 percent depleted rather than relying solely on the TDS meter. In an ideal world, we should actually change the resin at about 90 percent depletion and not wait till the cartridge is completely exhausted and experiencing breakthrough. That's because after complete exhaustion, the ion exchange resin will dump the contaminants with the weakest electrical charge first, and with many water supplies, that's often ammonia and silica, which is pretty undesirable. For those of you who run two canisters of resin and continually change the first one after depletion, then swap the old one to the front with the new DI resin last. Dumping like this is less of a concern, and running the first cartridge to near exhaustion is a more acceptable practice. Biff also asked another solid question. How long can the leftover DI resin remain effective after the bag has been opened? Assuming that it's been well stored, the air has been removed, and it's tightly sealed. I generally wouldn't buy more resin than I would use in a year. It will last longer than that, but the capacity is going to get depleted to some degree. Biggest issues are mainly keeping the CO2 or carbon dioxide out of the open bag and keeping the moisture in. The Ziploc on the bulk bags are what I'd refer to as an acceptable solution in most cases, but better is resealing the bags. That can be done with an impulse sealer, which is 50 to 100 bucks, and not a likely purchase for most reefers. However, while I haven't done it myself, I have heard of reefers cutting the Ziploc off and using a clothes iron to reseal the edge. Since these irons are different, I would start with the lowest temp, give it a few seconds, and go from there. Next up, Silver and Black R35. I've heard the non-color changing resin can actually last longer. I reached out to the lead chemist at our manufacturer, and he said, Neither the cation nor the anion dyons reduce resin capacity. Although dyeing the resins does expose the resins to additional handling, in the case of that dyed anion resin, it can increase the level of CO2 in the resin, thus lowering the column capacity. So indirectly, with a little bit of extra handling, there might be slightly less capacity, but likely not measurable or noticeable by the average user, and almost certainly not big enough to be the primary factor when choosing the right resin for your application or needs. Next up, TW Reefer. So if my RO is consistently zero TDS, do I need to add DI? Assuming the TDS measurement is correct, that likely means you have less than 50 TDS to begin with. Now that may mean there are very few general contaminants in the water, but it doesn't give you any insight into what they actually are. For example, if your city uses chloramines, it's very likely the water coming out of your RO system has significant amounts of ammonia. Since very few reefers are aware of what is or isn't in their water, I'd always suggest using a DI stage as the final polish. The good news is, with ultra low TDS like that, the DI cartridge will likely last for ages. And today's last question from Silver and Black R35 again. The results have me wondering if it might be worth it to use a small amount of Seachem Prime in newly made RODI water once the DI color starts to change. I assume this is related to any potential ammonia or chlorine that might make its way through an RODI system. I think that's a pretty unnecessary step as long as it's reading zero TDS. And even though it is safe, I still think it's wise to attempt to avoid adding any unnecessary chemicals to water use for the tank. That said, I would suggest not using the DI all the way to 100% exhaustion. If someone is concerned about this type of thing, running two DI stages would likely provide the assurance of water quality and buffer or margin of error they're looking for without the hassle or worry. 
So that wraps up today's Reef to Reef FAQ. If you have any questions, R2R community is always the best at providing quick, well thought out answers, so check them out. See you tomorrow with this Friday's Beerus TV Investigates, where we look at what happens when we run two DI resin types separate rather than mixed. You might be surprised with how this works.